Okay, Robbie here, Dodgy Garage, Mobile DPF Cleaning. Uh, this is a Chev Cruise. It's a 1.7 diesel. And uh, customer says the uh, DPF light is on. Um, I've already been in, loaded up. Let me turn the ignition on again. Um, let's have a look here. I've already gone into the system, so we want exhaust after information, after after treatment information. We're looking for basically we're looking for differential pressure, um, and you know, see it's there. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So we're looking for anywhere between zero and ten. Um, millibars, we just change it to HPA. HPA and millibars are the same thing. Um, I have already um, started this car and um, the at idle the HPA was at 30, uh, which is obviously quite blocked. Uh, I'm not going to start it now and the reason being is because I have the oxygen sensor open. I've uh, taken off the oxygen sensor let me show you and I've gone in through see if we can get all the way down there uh, and if I can see so can you see there okay so that's where I've gone in through that oxygen sensor hole there and so I've cleaned out the DPF right next to the turbo, so I did that with the engine idling. Um, this here is the oxygen sensor that I've just taken out. Let me see if I can get it. Here it is. There's the oxygen sensor I've taken out. I'm going to give that a bit of a clean in a moment. And uh, if you go to the back of the car, you can see there's a lot of uh, chemicals that's coming out of the exhaust there. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm waiting for half an hour. The chemicals are in the DPF. Um, I'm waiting for half an hour for the chemicals to do their do their thing. I'm going to uh, reconnect, uh, clean up that oxygen sensor, reconnect it. But uh, the main information is that at idle it was at 30 millibar and at 3,000 revs it was at 900 millibar. And ideally you want the um, millibars at uh, 3,000 revs to be anywhere between 40 and 80 millibar so um, I'm going to close it all up and when I've uh, got the half an hour time period has passed then uh, I'll show you where we are okay the next thing is is uh, read fault codes again retrieve the fault codes Okay, they're all there, and then what we do is we clear DTCs, clear fault code memory. Okay, and uh, magic, there are no DTCs. Yeah, well in theory, that's not fixed the camshaft issue though. Okay, so the information that I've pulled up here is now relevant to when I start up the engine again. We're at 0849, I'm waiting for it to go to, I mean 0949, waiting for it to go to 0950. Then we start it up, bring it up to temperature, and we're going to be watching the exhaust gas pressure will invariably raise quite a lot because there's fluid inside there and it needs to clear out all that uh, soot that's in there. Then um, I've reset the dpf so it thinks that uh, time since last generation is at zero kilometers and um, i've reset the oil as well because in these cars it's important that the oil life gets changed so i've reset that i have explained to the lady that uh, the oil definitely needs to be changed again because it's at full and on these uh, japanese cars the oil level needs to be between um, half and full because when it regenerates it pushes extra fuel into the cylinders some of that fuel bleeds past the pistons and into the oil well 
and slowly but surely raises the oil level. So that's uh, then called oil dilution because now it's diluted the oil with diesel. So you don't want that. So with that, the car should then start doing its own regenerations as well because now the oil is at zero again. So we're at now 51, start her up. And uh, let her idle a little bit first. Pressure's still the same. And we're going to bring up that oil, the uh, engine coolant temperature. We're going to bring that, uh, this, this one here, we're going to bring it up to operating temperature, which should be around 80. So let's get going. I've got the car on two and a half thousand revs and we're at 265 uh, pressure hectopascals which is the same as millibars so that's gonna slowly start dropping we can change it to a graph which looks quite fancy let's see if we can do that is it gonna do it there we go and that's what you want to see the pressure inside the DPF dropping big time. Okay, and at two and a half thousand, we're still at two and a half thousand. Engine coolant temperature seventy four degrees, so it's still raising. We're already at uh, 51, 52 HPA, that's the one there. Um, and that's at two and a half thousand revs. And if you look in the review mirror there, there's still a lot of um, smoke and steam coming out the back there, as you can see. Got to wait for all of that to go away. In the meantime, keeping an eye on that uh, pressure there. And at uh, 3000 revs, ideally you want the exhaust gas pressure to be anywhere between 40 and 80. And so we're already within range, we're at 67. There's still a lot of smoke coming out of the back. Um, so, so far we're looking good. We're getting there. Engine temperature 87 degrees. We're looking good so far. Okay, also what I'm interested in there is the exhaust gas temperature. It's um, 281. You want to see that getting nice and hot. You want to see that the car is happy to raise the exhaust gas temperature which it's doing um, which means that it should be um, happy to do its own G, uh, DPF regens and then temperatures are getting up there nice and hot it's looking good if they stay cool and below 200 then the car is keeping itself cool it's cutting off regen so that's that's looking good and at idle you want that below 10 and it's at uh, cycling between one and three, four, around about there. So that's looking good, but there's still a lot of smoke coming out. So we're looking good, looking very good. Okay, so engine temperature went up to 100 degrees. It's now dropping down to 98. Exhaust gas pressure are in the green. That's where you want it to be. The exhaust gas temperatures went up to 280 and slowly, slowly dropping down now. It's like the car's just warmed everything up just to see where it is. The exhaust gas uh, temperature sensor 2 and 3 are also dropping now. So, to be honest, and then back down to um, idle and well below 10 millibars of pressure so that's believe it or not a very good okay then we need to 
uh, go to special functions because we need to go to reset functions then we go to particular filter reset there's the pressure sensor reset and oil life reset so we're going to go to TPF reset ignition on ignition is on okay and it says here that soot accumulation value of approximately 70 percent is normal press confirm button to start the process communicating okay then it says turn off the ignition so we'll do that and we've got to wait for some time okay that's done uh, go back to okay so read fault codes let's just have a look and see what's there no DTCs and read data stream we're going to bring this car back up to temperature again Distance, engine speed, engine cooling temperature, exhaust one, exhaust two. Change that guy to HPA. Okay, we'll have a look at it shortly. Okay, we're going to start her up. No more uh, check engine warning lights. That's looking good. Bonnet's open, that's fine. Okay, so 3000 revs with 60, 70 HPA. And at idle, we're down to zero. That's it, that's what you want to see. That's all good. Okay, let's just go back and have a look at the read fault codes again, just to check. Nothing, no DTCs. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Go back here. Gonna go out here. And I'm actually going to rescan the car. Okay, so we're nearly all done. And that's it. Scanned. No more fault codes. Job done.